born to beauty. Inspired by your wellness and burdened by life, this is the path to finding the warrior within you. This podcast is for women of every shape, color, and style. It's about finding your inner beauty and finding the strength to battle the outside world around you. Take a break and sip some tea with me, Gwen Osborne, from teen mom to celebrity life and all the necessary trials in between. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Tea with Gwen. I am your host, Gwen Osborne. Today's guest is an expert in health, beauty, and wellness, and represents it 100%. We're going to welcome Christine Bullock. What's up? 99.9%. I oh, do really? A good brisket in Hawaiian roll. <laughs> <laughs> She's listen, she is human, you guys. Like she really is. I did wonder for a second, but she's here in front of me and she is breathing. So she's being human. <laughs> listen, remember, you can always learn more about today's topic and tips by looking at the description from whatever app you're using. Subscribe to my podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, or Audible. Let me just break down Christine for you guys, okay? She is the founder and CEO of KO Body Care. It is the original face grade body care, which also includes high performance hemp and biometric beauty supplements. She has been teaching fitness and working in this beauty business for over 20 years, which also includes creating the workout programs for at Brooke Burke, at SI underscore swimsuit and at fit on app. Christine and her fabulous mind and body have been seen on Netflix's reality show, fit for fashion as a judge and a trainer. And you know what? On top of all of this, she's also a wife and a mama of two beautiful baby girls. <laughs> Christine, woo, breathe girl. <laughs> Cause I need That's to breathe just after describing all of what you do. <laughs> we need to know it's fun though I lo I've loved it all um, yeah I mean you know, how passion. did you start this morning how did you start what was the first thing on your mind this morning yeah it's funny I mean I think it's up around 5 30 which is kind of typical it's a 5 or 5 30 year and um first thing was that's well, really my, early my toddler is on spring break so we have her all this week and so my husband and I both are in our own businesses so we're just swapping out each day and be figuring out activities so at first I had to figure out what day it is because it was really off this week and then I had an 8 a.m um meeting overseas on zoom so I was just like kind of I walked myself through my schedule like how do I get my kids ready me ready like what's going on here today you know to to make wow. sure it was all whatever ready to go by the time that they got up at like six so you get, give yourself 30 minutes. To, yeah. I mean, it just depends. Sometimes they'll sleep in, sometimes they wake me up. Sometimes they sleep in a little bit more. I mean, my husband is a really, really early bird. So he goes and works out downstairs. And so I have to listen to the monitor. He's such a turd. So if he's downstairs then I can't go work out cause I need the monitor, but I try, sometimes I'll wake up and do a quick 20 minute workout um and then you know come up and it's all about the kids in the morning for the first like hour hour and a half or so and how old are they again they she my remington range just turned four this past weekend That's i think right. which is why i'm still discombobulated because we had two days of parties which obviously through covid you're not used to two small parties but even that but yeah, um and then i have like real a humans. 10 month old yeah <laughs> Yeah. And a little 10 month old too. And so. a 10 month old. And we're going to talk about that because this girl's body don't look like it's about anything out, let alone something 10 months ago. Okay. But we're going to talk about the sponsor highlight right now, which of <laughs> course is KO Body Care. It is an award-winning age defense body care brand. KO Skin Care and Nutrition deliver a complete results-driven body care ritual that serves you all day long. So you can live vibrantly sounds very Gwendolyn like this skincare <laughs> line is dedicated to total optimum cell health if you've never experienced feeling vibrant radiant more youthful and stronger than you already are KO is the product line for you you can follow them on Instagram at KO Body Care or just go shop now go to kobodycare.com <laughs> I know I'm going to be on there because it just it seems to match me listen 
we need to get into this whole, like, you just had a baby 10 months ago and it wasn't even your first one. It was your second one and your body is insane. And so listen, we have, there's quite a few of women that are going to be on here listening to that. We know some tricks here and there. We, we, you know, it's sort of, but you got to give us some of this wisdom, girl. We need to know what are you eating? How are you sleeping? You know, what do we need to do to get a body that looks like Christie's? You're so sweet. I mean, yeah, it's absolutely like my biggest thing too in health is how you feel. And that's what really led me through this and what I'm very passionate about, because when you feel your best, whatever body type, you will ultimately look your best. You're going to have that shining, glowing, clear skin. You're going to feel the vitality, the energy. You're going to have beautiful, rosy, pink cheeks. Um, The percentage of body fat to muscle is going to feel great because you're putting the time in for you. And it doesn't mean like 20 million hours a day or even one hour a day, to be very honest. And I want to back up and say, like, I like a lot of people say, oh, she's in fitness. She works out so much. This really comes easy. For me, I have had so many health problems. I have a low thyroid, um, which was much lower at one point of my, you know, years ago. I also have PCOS and uh, it's a hormonal problem. It causes infertility as well. So does the low thyroid, which I went through eight years of infertility. Um, And, but it also causes, it's kind of like diabetes in the sense that everything I eat turns to fat. It's not utilized as energy. So then you don't have as much energy, but also it's not utilized. So it's just stored immediately. So for me, weight gain comes very, very easily. So I like to preface it by that because um, I totally get it. And I've had periods of my life where I just gained a lot, a lot of weight and it was very hard. And I worked even, I worked so hard to take it off and I don't work hard because now, because I feel like I've balanced and found a very balanced lifestyle with it. And so, yes, I, post baby, I feel I am amazed at how well I actually do feel because I've had so many periods of my life where I was low energy and had so many health problems, you know? Yeah. But I I think it really is about, um, I mean, some of the tips is it's what I use prenatally, postnatally, whatever it is. Um, One is my is the nutrition that you're eating and the supplementation that you have as well. I truly don't believe that we can eat all the foods that we need in the sense of supplementation. Our foods don't have the nutrients that they once had from the soils and the waters and stuff. And then to eat that much food, um, you know, I know how like a lot of vegans are like, I eat all this food, but yeah, but then that's stealing energy from you to digest it. So we need a balanced lifestyle in the sense, you know, and I once was a vegan and now I've added meats back um, and fishes, you know, in moderation. And that's actually also helped me a lot. Complete plant-based here. I believe in my plants, but for me, um, it's worked to add some of those things back in. And that really happened during pregnancy. I was so low energy that I started to add some animal proteins back. And then I needed that, um, postnatally too. I could tell for the, um, like longer energy, you know, long sustaining energy. And I just still feel really good, a higher protein diet for me. Mm. Um, and, you know, sleep is here nor there. I mean, it, with a newborn, you obviously, your sleep gets cut a lot. Oh, yeah. What, what I learned was sleep is so vital. And this is one of the things that we led into in the sense of KO is that I used to wake up around 12 to 2 somewhere. And sometimes it would be 12 to 2 or, you know, some hours in between. Those are the really major hours that especially a woman needs to be sleeping because if not, it imbalances our hormones. And I actually think a lot of that is what threw my hormonal issues off or Mm. caused them to, to start. And so we say beauty sleep and beauty sleep really is just that it's so vital. Sleep is the time where we are repairing and whether I have a friend who lives on two hours a night, I swear she shows me her little fit. I don't know how she does it, but she can do it. She's fine. But it's exactly, but it's not good. You know what I mean? Like we can't live off of, I really believe we need the seven to eight hours of sleep when you can as much as you can. So I take CBD. 
And so for me, that has really helped. And I think that helped me got pregnant because I was getting the sleep that I need to balance my hormones. Mm. Um, it also reduces your cortisol and all of these other things that are affecting us too. So even now, I mean, I took it postnatally and it's like that way, I mean, I could hear the baby breathe, do all that kind of stuff, but, um, it, and it, you don't wake up with a hangover, like sleeping pills do and all that kind of stuff. But when I do wake up to go feed the baby, help her, whatever she needs, I fall back asleep right away. Right away. Right. So for me, that sleep is was super vital. The CBD was the help repair. for the seven to eight hours. So yeah. the healthy, cause I just had a, a, a gynecologist from Dallas on here and she said, really it's eight hours, you know, that we need. And I'm, I struggled with eight hours. Yeah, I, like Six to seven is usually where I'm at, you know, if I would I'm, love it, but I don't yeah. get it right. <laughs> Honestly, I don't even, I don't know whether it's just because I have a lot on my plate right now, but like my, I just can't stay in the bed for that long. I'm like, okay, she's like, I gotta get up now. Yeah. <laughs> my, my brain is up, but th- she was saying for health reasons. And, you know, that's coming from a gynecological point of view, your body needs seven to eight hours of sleep. So, yeah. you know, if you can get but the issue is, like you said, is to try to get back to sleep. And so if the CBD is, is helping you still just fall back to let your yeah. mind rest to be able to do it, then that's- Or to it. fall asleep in the, yeah, in the like first place. Even, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so, you, so let's go back a bit. So you said that mm-hmm. you had some health challenges. Mm-hmm. And um, was that before you had your children? Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. So you knew that that was going on and you had to kind of monitor- the way you were eating. And at that time, was that when you decided to be vegan? Um, so this started 10 years ago. So when I was 30 years old, I got married when I was 29 and we started, we were like, all right, we'll try and, you know, have babies. And then when it wasn't working and my periods were off, but my periods were off because of the PCOS. And, and then, you know, I'm sure the fitness didn't play a great part in it because I was very low percentage body fat. Right. Um, and that didn't help either. And that's a big thing that I have for women out there nowadays yeah. too, is that fit is not necessarily what fit looks like, especially right. for women. Not necessarily Because healthy. it will throw, ev- no, because there's tons of fitness girls out there that, that I know that healthy. have had the same problems that I have had. Wow. You know, and it's the types of workouts they're doing. It's the percentage of body fat. It's all of that kind of stuff. And mm-hmm. so I don't want people to go through that and think right. that or have that pressure as well. Um, but yeah, it was definitely before. And we went through like five, I wish I would have done more background information because I kept saying, I need to heal myself. I need to find out what the root cause of all this was because I didn't know I had PCOS and low thyroid for five years, but I knew I felt horrible. I mean, the thing is I have the strongest mind. I can do anything. You know, we were talking before like 12 hours on a fitness set working in 107 degree temperature without air conditioning, like uh, whatever it is, like I could do it mentally. Um, And I honestly wouldn't even get sore or anything like that, but my body was breaking down. It wasn't sore. It was like, I can't walk. Like I couldn't hug my husband. I was so much inflammation in my body from doing all of that and not understanding repair, going back to sleep and rejuvenation and time off. Like, I just think it's so vital. So I take a lot of time off from fitness now, but I just do really quick, short, effective workouts instead, you know, when I can fit them in. Um, and that was something that I learned to help repair my health. Like I had to find that balance for myself. So how in did my you find too. it? How did you find that this was the problem? Like, so people who were listening, you know, mm-hmm. that are like, you know what, I'm trying to work out. I'm trying to eat well, but I'm still not feeling the greatest. Yeah. How do they find out something like what you found out about your body? I hear all the time from people. I, you know, that they're doing so much too, or, and they can't lose the weight. And I think that's a huge sign that something internally is off or something's off with your program. You know, like sometimes I'd say, what kind of fitness are you doing? Or what are you eating that you think is so good? (laughs) Right. But I mean, I think it's all about, it is just about balance. I mean, you can go to see a doctor. I kind of had to figure it out on my own, but eventually I had to say, I think I have a low thyroid and go see a specialist, a specialist to say, because the problem with thyroid and a lot of hormonal problems, I will say is that a general doctor, even like the best OBGYN, the best doctor, when they test your panel, it can look normal for your age. So you can have a number of all of these different things that says it's on the low barrier for a 40 year old, 
Mm -hmm. I don't want to be on the low barrier for a 40 year old. I want to be on the normal panel for a 30 year old. Like I want to feel that way. Why can't we, we don't have to feel our age. And so, I mean, once I, you know, had a specialist kind of look at it and say, yeah, they're low for whatever age we need to help boost that and help to repair it. Um, then I did. And with the hormonal problems with a PCOS too, it was like, okay, if I've blown everything out, then I need to learn how to repair and rejuvenate it from the inside. That's your stress. That's how you deal with your stress. That is your fitness. Your fitness causes stress to your body. So why are we then deteriorating our body even more to get to the point? It doesn't make sense, right? right? That doesn't make sense, yeah. The nutrition that we're adding to support, I believe in a hugely anti-inflammatory diet and as many anti-inflammatories as we can possibly take um, supplementally to. and, you know, back to the, the whole sleep thing too, was very vital as well. So what would we consider an anti-inflammatory? Um, I mean, they're basically they're That's what they are. It's a, it's a category of foods that are anti-inflammatory in the sense that they're going to help like antioxidants and all that, that help to reduce the inflammation that increases in our body. One of the major ones is like curcumin. We all know turmeric curcumin mm-hmm. is the potent. Blueberries form. are actually a good antioxidant as well. Right? Antioxidants. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To, to help just balance all of that, the inflammation that workouts cause in our body, that the environment causes that, you know, toxins, you know, that attach to our biggest organ, the skin, all of that. And this is what's so, um, becomes so interesting to me because, and I'm like, oh, maybe I need to go get a nutrition degree (laughs) because food and honestly, like my mom is Jamaican. I don't know if you know that, but like growing up, learning about how what foods do what for you and why so like you know in England they like their lamb and then they have their mint with it but it's like the whole point of it was the fact that the mint helped to digest the lamb oh I love that I never even I love those kind of things yeah exactly Mm -hmm. and I didn't either but you know my mom being like that's where she you know they learn like what the plants are and what they do and why you have it and when you have it and all these things and so to me, that is so important for knowing when to eat, what to eat, how much to eat causes such a different effect on each individual's body, right? I absolutely love that you're saying that. Yeah. And I, I always go back to that, that keep like, it's kind of, it's common sense. And I realize that common sense is not normal, especially in fitness for, or in, in nutrition. Cause we do have to know things like that first of all, right. but they were, they used to be really common information. And I love that, that it can be passed around again, but it is, it's just getting back to the basics. There's too many diets out there. I've right. never been on a diet. It's not one thing or another. What's going to work for you is not going to work for me too. Yeah. I think it's just about living off of the basics of how we used to live. Like right. when my, my most basic thing I will tell everybody is that when we used to live off, we had to live off of the land. So we lived a plant-based diet and we live seasonally and right. wherever you live, those were the foods that you eat. And so right. it's still, if we're living a plant-based diet, it's still great because it's good for the environment too. We're not shipping these, you know, rarer right. foods right. Um, through the environment, causing all that toxic release and stuff like that. And we're living off of the land and we're not overproducing in the sense of plants or in the sense of animals and fish, we lived off of that. When we had a cow or a chicken, we had to keep them around because milk and eggs. So then when they finally decided to eat one of those chickens or the cow, it was very special for them. Right. And it was shared between a huge family. It wasn't a big chicken for one person. I mean, coming right. from a fitness background, how many <laughs> men have I seen just eat an entire chicken and broccoli or eggs and broccoli all the time? Right. I know. Right. Like, no, this is not the diet people. And <laughs> right. so, you know, that's how I really think about things still. Right. And I just think it's like, it's just, it's so common. It's just living back on the basics as much as we Absolutely. Can. It's learning so much as like, you know, butternut squash and things that only grow certain times of the year, you only mm-hmm. eat 
than men. And, and you know, the sweet potatoes over um, produced at certain times, and that's why they ended up making sweet potato pie. But it wasn't something that you would have all year round available to you, right? So it's just kind of like the greediness of us all now. We're just like, well, I feel like having sweet potato pie in, in May. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, then it's like, so then it's like, but it's available. So I'm just going to go get it. It wasn't like that at the time, you know? And like, and, I mean, if you think about it, oranges are winter because of the vitamin C watermelon right. is a summer because of the hydration. So exactly. it's actually, they are the nutrients that we need during that season as well. And, and that's what makes sense. Well, tell me what is, mm-hmm. what would be like your favorite dish for dinner for, that you feel is still yummy, <laughs> but healthy. Yeah. I mean, I just live off. So I meal prep. And so I do it either on Sunday or Monday and Thursday, usually, or Wednesday and Thursday, depending, because we'll order out on the weekends and kind of do all of that. Um, But I just make tons of veggies. It's always a mixture. So I can't say I eat one thing, but they're always different colored veggies each week. And I usually steam. We're getting back to some raw because the weather is warmer again. So maybe I'll make some salads. Steam is easier on the digestive system. And when it's easier to break down, it's actually better for your beauty and it doesn't age you as much. So as much as we all loved raw diets before we heard about them, it's actually so much harder on you and it can somewhat age you. So you just want to lightly steam them. So steam um, for beauty, ladies. Steam for beauty. Yeah, for your a little bit of steam. And steam for beauty on your outsides too. Yeah, love a good totally. Steam, okay. <laughs> And then I just, we prep a couple of animal proteins. I mean, I have a toddler and now, you know, my 10 month old and my husband too. And so, and we'll have like a red meat, we'll have a chicken or we'll have a fish so that they can have bites of stuff. And I just mix it. I love a good steamed spinach with a little bit of, we do a breaded panko chicken, um, you know, or even like a hummus coated fish, like a white fish. Mm But I, and I will say my biggest meal is lunch. Like my dinner is like my lunch. And then I just do a little snackaroo for dinner, mainly because I'm chasing kids, but I actually, I do the intermittent fasting, Mm. not because of that. I mean, I just do the intermittent fasting anyway, but I don't like eating late. I don't like eating very close to bed whatsoever, like hours before bed. I get hungry. Sometimes I get hungry and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna have a cup of tea because that's just going to fill the spot and I'll be able to go to sleep. But otherwise yeah. I'm gonna lie there just hungry. Otherwise, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I, I know. And I used to, and I get it, but I don't now. I mean, I think it just, your body learns. It's a, it's a small, it's a very slow evolution. So you don't want to mm-hmm. speed into something like that. Right. Um, but you just kind of shrink it. It's really hard though. I mean, I think it's been mm-hmm. easier this year because we don't go out to dinners. Right. But now as you start to go out to dinner late again and your friends want to go out, I'm I like, know. I can't eat. I know. And it's like, you can have a little bit of everything, but you just can't have a whole lot of everything, like a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And you're okay. I eat carbs. And that's the biggest thing too. Like people are, you know, they think, oh, you're so strict and you do fitness all the time. And it's like, absolutely not. Like I, you know, we love a good Hawaiian roll and brisket on the weekends. Our friends make homemade brisket. It's amazing all the time. And they bring it over. And then and, you know, potato chips, nacho, not, well, I don't like potato chips, but like nachos and, okay. you know, but I dip it with like, we always have healthy hummuses. I have cookie, I have sweets here. I'm not a big sweet person because I check my gut health all the time. And I think when your gut is pretty balanced, I don't have the sweet cravings anymore, but I have a vegan cookies for when I need them. Some that are mm. completely frozen and I can chop and throw in the oven in five minutes and have one cookie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so and no, you're like raising I, your babies to already like the taste of those kinds of things. So it's just going to be a natural evolution for them. It. My kids eat, especially my toddler, but she's old enough to eat everything, everything that I eat. She eats three veggies, at least a meal with a protein. And, you know, she eats like our green powders that we have our superfood powder. We call it her Hulk juice. And she drinks that too. A smoothie in the morning, most mornings. So And we're going to go into that because like now you have created your own body care products that are for the inside and the outside, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about your products and what you love and what you use every day and what you recommend for us. Yes, absolutely. I mean, yeah, we, I, in, 
being a fitness model, I was noticing these changes on my body. And in working with hundreds of women over two decades all over the world, you hear the same things over and over again. And especially women as they start to have babies really started to notice the changes. And this was like 10 years ago. So there was nothing on the market in body care at that point. Um, and so really to provide that optimal results for my clients. And I, what we didn't mention, and I, you know, it's hard. I, I've been in the beauty industry as long for 20 years as well. I've always had three jobs and been hustling. So I was always fitness and beauty somehow. Worked with plastic surgeons in Beverly Hills, got into surgery with them, traveled around the world in spas and did all of this other stuff. So I have a background in, in, in that sense as well. And well, I don't know um, how you've been able to fit all this. You must have the best time management skills because you three know. Jobs. I told you I wasn't sleeping before. No, <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. but um, so, you know, so I basically just took the background and my passion for nutrition first into skincare to start formulating. And we have a private lab here in California that I work with. So I get to control the ingredients, control the formulations work with the scientist there to say, this isn't going to combo with this, or he finds where the you know ingredient comes from, obviously the, the best Amazing. quality one. Mm -hmm. And um, so we created face grade body care. And we were the first to launch in 2016, although we had been formulating since 2013 or 14. Um, and we completely disrupted the market because we were the first to come out and say, treat your body like your face, like, and this yes. is just as important. Um, and it really came about because I was using face care all over my body. Right. <laughs> so I couldn't right. afford that any longer. No. <laughs> so we basically just copied that and we, we won awards right away for our formulas, like our serum, um, won best in beauty for best cellulite treatment. Although it's like so much more than that from shape magazine, our detox master scrub, same award, our remodeling serum is for like crepey skin. It won remedies award for best um, product of the year. And We've, we've evolved since then because I love CBD so much to add four products in CBD to, to um, topical, but to um, supplements as well. And then also we have a full supplement brand too, because in order again, to give those best possible results, I wanted, and I've tried so many things over the years. I'm sure you have too. And I've been yeah. sent so many things. It's like, I know what works immediately for my body. Right. I'm very sensitive. And I, it's that common sense of what nutrients are really going to be the most vital for everybody that's going right. to fit for everybody. We're right. all different, but I think there's some commonalities we can all just not think about during the day. We can right. take it in the morning, throw it in a smoothie, throw it in some water, take it and feel feel great. Like, right. no, we're getting our nutrients for the day, no matter what happens. If we eat right. brisket and, and Hawaiian roll potato chips during the day. <laughs> you have said that about three times. So now for dinner, I feel like I have to go get some Sorry, brisket and Hawaiian like rolls. Sorry, drooling for brisket. It's so good. He needs to create a business. We just, right? we buy him the meat and he does it and he, and he brings it Meat and body care together, okay? Um, well, listen, yeah. how do you see this all working for your future? Like, where do you want KO body care to end up? How do you... Do you, it, Cause it sounds to me like you have enough to have your own shop. Like, I feel like I should be walking at the Grove, you know, or the Americana in Glendale and see a KO body care shop. You know, is that what you see for yourself? I would love that. I mean, I would love that one day. Like we're, we're currently in a lot of retailers and we're expanding exponentially this year internationally, which is really exciting, which I've always wanted. Yeah. Um, I do love the Europeans. I feel like there we we run by eu standards already and i just feel like there is an um a common sense and education there already about wellness that sometimes mm -hmm. in america i love america mm -hmm. but we mix it up we go one way or do we go the other too much like we're mm -hmm. not natural but then we're so completely natural and not just in skincare but in everything we go to the extremes where I feel like yeah. there's a happy balance over there mm -hmm. um where they just they kind of get it and um so we're excited I would love a shop too um but I I more so am passionate about providing the education exactly like you're saying like mint goes with me because it uh, because I think when we understand what we're doing with knowledge comes power Right. So when we, I hear people, when you set these goals and it's like, I've just broke up with my boyfriend. I'm going to get in shape. I don't like this body part. I need to get that. You know what I mean? <laughs> or it's crepey skin. Yeah. Then 
it's a, such a short-term goal. We don't stick with it. But when we understand that our gut health is causing this, 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 or when we take this, we're feeling better because of this. When we cut dairy, it does all of this. And then we add it back and we're like, whoa, I feel horrible. You know, I feel the difference in what we're doing. Like it is this internal, um, drive to just be healthier and stick with a happy balanced lifestyle as well, you know, as opposed to the the whole ups and downs of, you know, being healthy, not being healthy, being healthy, not being healthy. Right. The Oprah Winfrey way. Yes. The former. I, yes. I said it. I said it. We're all there. Okay. Like it was a long, it was 25 We've years. We've all been of, there. Of the up and down with the Oprah Winfrey, yeah. you know what I mean? Because there were so many different fads, you know? And yeah. some of them work really well. And then, and honestly, even now, some work really well, but people have to find what works well for their body. Oh my God. Look, how, look how many celebrities have come out and tried a keto or tried the one before that and have been like, yeah, I could do it to get in star shape. And, but I couldn't, I felt for Yeah, couldn't exactly. maintain. Mm-hmm. And then it blows out your metabolism because you've just, you've done too much, you right. know? So you end up going the opposite way. What is your hardest body part to keep in shape? I would think, um, I'm guessing it's my thighs. I think I gain weight in my thighs thighs right away. Yeah. I can always, it's weird. Like I, oh yeah. Cause it's like, I could have like ripped abs and I'm like, I'm fit. And then you go like, like, oh, I am gaining weight. (laughs) It's like, you can kind of hide it somehow, you know, I don't know sometimes. Cause sometimes I look at some women and they gain in their stomach. But their arms and their legs look amazing. And yeah, I'm like, you I know. A baggy I love sweatshirt. It when their legs look so skinny. I know. <laughs> I know. It, well, my thighs are my thing too. It's like when the thighs and the booty start looking a little bit too, as one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they start blending too well. You're like, mm, I need to differentiate between the thigh and the booty there. I know there's body types, but I, I do also wonder if it is. Um, how we eat and what we eat because I've also heard that too I'm not I have not done research on that yet but (laughs) we still have to find that out willing to try (laughs) well you seem very up all the time Christine do you ever have days where you don't feel good where you don't feel happy what do you do to overcome that yeah I mean I absolutely I am the eternal optimist I always say to my detriment because I'm like I can never give up but I'm just like just give up just take a break yes. um, but I will say even like it was like two weeks ago I mean I'm postpartum and I'm postnatal I should say but I'm also postpartum in that sense and I have never been really hormonal uh, well I've had moments and I'm very, very sensitive to medications, to anything. And I can't take anything or it will like, literally I'll just start crying sometimes off of something super simple. It's like something simple in the environment or I don't even know I'm crying. So with the postpartum, I was actually shocked and it really just hit me recently. And I was having some like roller coaster of emotions, but that I knew wasn't, the good thing is, I was like, I'm fully aware when my reality is not the same of what's going on in my mind. And that's the nice thing that I immediately went for help with my husband and said, because I think it's the hardest to go to your family and the people closest to you and be like, I'm not feeling good. I need help and not be somewhat a little bit of a shame. Do you know what I mean? You're their support system. I mean, I feel that as the wife and the mom. To be completely vulnerable. Strong. Yes, exactly. To let the guard down. I immediately went to my OBGYN. She didn't give me the information that I wanted, wanted to put me on meds. And I was like, this is too quick. No way, you know? And I just sat back and I called my hormone specialist who we talked about to get it tested. I actually haven't had time to go in yet, but I was like, look, let me figure this out. I haven't had any time to myself. I've been busting my butt. I haven't been regular with my workouts. Um, I could probably be better with my eating, like really clean it up right now. Um, I always live balanced, but if I'm not feeling well, I clean up those foods so that I don't have the sugars, the processed foods and all that kind of stuff that really does affect our moods. Um, and I got back to my fitness and, uh, you know, forced myself to get up early, set that timer to get it done and tried to get a little bit more sleep too. Like as soon as I put that baby to bed, I was like 
in bed, bed trying to fall asleep a little you know two hours earlier than I normally do and I I felt better oh, yeah okay. but you I mean I have days too I think there's other things if it's not like that like it's hard when you have a goal and somebody else you see reaches your goal. But I think that's one of the biggest things of people feeling anxiety or depression is when we, especially on social media, are seeing, you know, it's called, it's jealousy a little bit, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Or somebody else reaching your goals. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I really work on is normally I don't feel that way. And when I do, I have to reach down deep in my gut mm -hmm. and be like really happy for that person. Check yourself. <laughs> yeah. yeah and be like stop and like truly find the joy yeah. for that person to right. celebrate them and their yeah. accomplishments yes and then just check in with myself why I actually need that one thing so badly because I don't like to get stuck on what my journey is supposed to be your journey your unique journey mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right I love that well we're gonna do a lightning round a Gwen lightning. okay 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 so what is your guilty pleasure? Brisket uh, and Hawaiian rolls. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> French fries. I love French fries and fried chicken and fries. like a good deep fried chicken. Ah, <laughs> uh, French fries is my Ranch thing too. Ranch dressing, oh that whole thing. Yeah, that was my first request post pregnant, post delivery. I was oh, like, really? I have a fried chicken sandwich and French fries, but I ended up eating a bag of cherries. I'm Not a like, drink, <laughs> like you didn't want a wine. Like I just remember missing having like wine or something. Like that was one. Of, you know what? Mine was sushi. Sushi oh, and yeah. wine after having my baby. <laughs> yep. Okay. What is your favorite emoji to use? It's, I have two of them and there it's the one where it's the girl that's like this or like that. <laughs> so you, I am obviously making mistakes like all the time. Okay. She, for those who can't see, she put her hand up to her forehead and it's the one where you're like, oh my gosh. Um, yes. Oh, the one yeah, where your hands yeah. out, like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You can either pick to do your eyebrows or your eyelashes. 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 Okay. That's not, yeah. I say the bigger the eyelashes and the hair, the closer to God. Like I am that girl. <laughs> I barely even got it out. She was like, eyelashes. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares about eyebrows? That's um, what is your favorite smoothie? Uh, I really love, I like anything. I will say it's evolved over the years. I feel like, you know, one time in my life, I was like, we can't do all the sweets in there. I think it can be so packed with healthy nutrients that I do a good banana. I love spinach in there because you can't taste it. I do my vital greens from KO with 25 superfoods usually or skin perfect collagen. Um, and then I throw like different kinds of berries, sometimes in nut butter, sometimes not, sometimes in date, spirulina. We have a KO protein we're coming out with. So I, I throw that in as well. It's a vegan protein, but I just mix it up every day. I love it because, you know, I kind of have like the same smoothie and I go to it because I don't know. I know I'm going to love it. I'm not going to like it. It has spinach in it too. And I'm like, and I've got everything I need from it. So I'm good. And I don't have to think like, I think that's what it is. I like about it, mm -hmm. but I want us to create a challenge for our listeners. Um, and I, I feel like it has to have something to do with protein. So I feel like, you know, how much protein we should eat in a day. I don't think that there is a certain amount of protein because we can get protein. There's protein in spinach. There's protein yeah. in asparagus. There's so much plant-based protein as well. I think it's about finding balance in your protein and making sure you're getting the full amino acid complex. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the one thing that I learned in my hormonal problems that a lot of women are having the same things because when we were living the plant-based lifestyle and I was a vegan, I didn't mention my mom raised me pescatarian and on the blood type diet. So okay. I had a lot of Thanksgivings with just fish. It was weird. Um, and so I've been everything. I've been vegetarian, vegan, and now I'm kind of back to eating red meat after 35 years. It's crazy. Wow. Thir 20 years maybe, because I probably ate a little bit. Anywho, I think it's just about eating what you what feels good for you. Not too much and not too little. And right. that's my common sense of it too, because it's not a certain amount where we're weighing things out, you know, right. but if you are low energy, then you need to, and you're already eating a plant-based, really healthy lifestyle, you probably need to increase your proteins. And maybe you can start with fish. A lot of people like to start with pescatarian 
or a good, you know, protein supplement. I will tell you the one thing with vegans and vegetarians too, in the sense of protein, quinoa and pea protein do not have all the amino acids. They're missing some of the vital amino acids that all of our other plants are missing too. Mm. So that's why, you know, we're having these problems with it. Sacha inchi, moringa protein, all complete amino acid profiles. So those are better proteins if you are plant-based and you need to supplement. All right, plant-based people, including my eldest daughter, she's 25 and she's a vegan. She's been a vegan for a year. And so she needs to listen to all of that. But I don't want to make that the challenge then because it's not specific enough. So let's make it, sorry, a, sorry. Let's make, it's okay. let's make it a phys- physical challenge. So if we were supposed to, so one of my hashtags is get up and move. If we're going to get up and move every day and it be safe for our bodies for 20 minutes, like you say, mm-hmm. what should we do with those 20 minutes? I mean, I, first of all, you got to put down all the external stuff. Like you can't be working, you know, if you really want to focus in on, on, there are times when you can go for a walk and, and work and do all that kind of stuff. But if you really want to focus in, I think we need to turn off our phones. If music inspires you, get something going that's inspiring you and allow yourself to tune out. It truly is my creative time where I like come up with business ideas and creative ideas and whatever things to do with my kids and my husband and all that kind of stuff, because I can tune everything out. It is meditative movement for me. In addition, I think that just toning workouts. We don't, I like heavy weights sometimes, but they're going to be hard on the joints after a while and hard on the muscles. And they can create big bulky muscles if you're just contracting with a big heavy weight. So I love light weights. I love resistance bands. I like everything that kind of opens and corrects my posture. Yeah. While toning. And I will tell you the good thing about that is it still creates lots of muscle mass and people get really scared of that word, but lean muscle mass is still amazing. And muscle mass increases your resting metabolism. So while we're sitting here talking, or you're listening to this podcast, you're burning more calories. That's right. Right. So I love little resistance uh, training, lightweights, ankle weights, bands. I love movements that are usually a three in one. So it's not like one bicep curl. It's like a sidekick lunge with the arms, with a little sit up, whatever thrown in, in one exercise Mm -hmm. so that my brain is working too. And it's taking out all those great cobwebs of my brain and it's keeping my brain really young as well. Um, And that's the movement meditation for me too, because I have to think about the coordination that I'm doing. Um, as opposed to be like, what's my schedule for the day? You know, right. You I'm, be just like, I'm bored. Yeah, right. Yeah. Think about what you're actually doing for yourself while you're doing <laughs> yeah. it. That yeah. helps and enjoy it. And, and we can go to your Instagram at Christine Bullock and we can find, you know, we can find movements on there that can last us for 20 minutes, or we can go to any of the other apps that you've created and you're on at Brooke Burke at SI underscore swimsuit at fit on app. Right. So we can get any of your yeah. workouts on there. Most are free too. Yeah. And they're free. Who doesn't love free? So, um, <laughs> what was I about to say? Is your mom your role model? Cause you did talk about her just now. Was she a role model for you? Cause if she was into being a pescatarian, was she into fitness too? She, uh, yeah, she was, she was an aerobics instructor. Um, and she, yes, I mean, she did Jane Fonda when I was a kid. And so I watched her do every Jane Fonda. I still know the songs. I can still see the people. <laughs> and I truly believe watching that. And my mom always said one day, I was like, no, now you watch me. <sighs> and like from there on out. And she had, um, oh my gosh, so many fit- old school fitness DVDs. Paula Abdul fitness DVD, oh where I would do the gosh, dance at I home. remember that. So I think and in they all that used sense, to wear those much. really high leotards, really high cut. I leotards. love it. <laughs> I know. I swear those are going to come back. They've got to come back. And the bright colors, right? All those bright yeah. colors. Yeah. I never oh, sang you my best. song, Christine. I got to sing you my song. Okay. It's yes, really, please. It's really quick. All right. You're here. I'm pleased and I really dig your company. Ill style, ill smile, ill peace mentality. That's amazing. (laughs) Oh my God. Mind blown emoji now. (laughs) You're welcome. Singing is something that gets me through. Your voice is so beautiful. Oh, thank you. I just love to share because it it gets me through and I hope it helps other people get through too. And it's my way of appreciating you being on here. 
Thank you. Um, the well, thank you I, for having me. Oh, you are so welcome. Thank you for coming on. The quote that I have found that matches you is, be the kind of person that makes other people want to up their game. Oh, I love that. And that truly yeah. is. I mean, I really, I try and learn through all my experiences and not say that like, I know exactly what I'm doing and I'm perfect, but this is what's worked for me. And I hope that this inspires you know, others to be the best that they can be. And I truly believe that through health, to taking care of your health, we are all, you know, can be the best that we can be then. If I feel, if I'm worried about my health and I don't feel good or I'm low emotion, if I'm low mood, I can't be the best mom or wife or friend or, right. you know, business owner. But if I, if I am, then I have no excuse to just put the best foot forward and be the best I can be. And I love that. <laughs> and I love that about you. And that's what, you know, has attracted me to you and you help me one up my game. And, you know, I just, it's very inspiring. You're very inspiring in many ways. So whatever you are doing, you please keep doing that and sharing it with us. Back at you, beautiful. You too. <sighs> Thank you. Well, I just want to thank everybody for joining us today on Tea with Gwen. I'm your host, Gwen Osborne. Remember, you can always learn more about this podcast and what we talk about by visiting the description notes of whatever you're listening to today. You can subscribe to me on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, or Audible. And if you've enjoyed today's show, which I know you did, please leave a review. It helps more people like you find my podcast. We will chat next time. Goodbye, everybody.